The Ferrari SF25 debuted at the Fiorano circuit last week, covering the first kilometers of the 2025 Formula One season. It did so amid the collective frenzy of the home track, crowded with thousands of fans full of hope for the 2025 racing campaign. The prancing horse showed a composed attitude, almost detached when discussing possible performance. However, the desire to conquer the world is evident, as the historic Italian team has one objective for the upcoming Formula One championship, namely to win, a duty the Marinello team cannot avoid after years spent watching others triumph. Among the various technical innovations on the Italian car, the front suspension system stands out. The new car is equipped with a pull rod suspension. This is a particular and in some respects, daring choice, as we have also discussed in some of the previous videos. Ferrari team principal Frederick Vasseur had announced some drastic changes, but behind the new pull rod setup are significant modifications to the vehicle's dynamics. The Ferrari technicians and engineers have aligned themselves with the technical trend of using a pull rod layout at the front of the car. We have already explained the reasons behind this dual pull rod in our in-depth technical analysis. A choice to favor aerodynamics and open new development paths in the final season of regulatory continuity. What has wrongly been overlooked is the arrangement of the triangles that define the so-called front quadrilateral a crucial factor for gaining more insight into the likely dynamics of the vehicle. The distinction between pull and push is irrelevant. Both mechanisms are equivalent in terms of performance, although there may be some differences in the activation of the various internal components that make up the suspension. The arm that transmits the forces has a different impact compared to the rocker, which is the lever acting as a pivot and intermediary between the arm and the various suspension components inside the chassis. If we look at the following image, we will notice a very different arrangement of the triangles compared to the previous configuration. By examining the photographic comparison, we can certainly notice how the front quadrilateral, referring to the upper and lower first arm, and the distance between the triangles on the chassis side and the hub, has undergone a very invasive modification. Moreover, also through the same comparison, we can see how the two triangles are much less parallel to the ground on the new car. In other words, to be clear, the attachment points of the triangles on the chassis side have been shifted several millimeters upward. This operation was achieved thanks to the placement of the internal suspension components in the lower part of the chassis. From the first analyses of the new pull rod at the front, it also emerges that Ferrari's engineers have chosen to vary both the longitudinal and transverse dynamics. In the front view, the lower and upper triangles have a slightly greater mutual incidence. If we ideally extend the actual inclination of the triangles, we find the center of instantaneous rotation. By connecting this point with the ground footprint of the opposite tire, we will find the roll center, identified by the intersection of this line with the symmetry axis of the F1 car. This force exchange point identifies important properties of the car, which, by the way, undergoes a certain migration during driving phases. The Ferrari SF25 single-seater shows a slightly higher roll center compared to its predecessor. The engineers and technicians in Marinello have worked on this axis to find a better compromise in terms of tire management. A higher roll center offers greater camber recovery after all. This move aims to simplify the management of tire temperatures at the front end. Keeping this concept in mind, Managing the compounds will still require precise fine-tuning work, constant throughout the 2025 Formula One Championship. On the side of this reasoning, it must be said that, compared to its competitors, the SF25 is still a car with a generally lower roll center. Regarding longitudinal dynamics, the percentage of anti-dive imposed on the suspension is analyzed. By this term we mean the orientation of the triangles, especially the upper one, relative to the horizontal axis. Once again, the extension of the triangles leads to the identification of the intersection point, whose vertical distance from the center of gravity determines the percentage of anti-dive. The McLaren MCL39 uses the same suspension layout. However, the SF25 shows an upper triangle with a decidedly reduced incidence. Compared to the SF24, the incidence has increased on the new car, but it is still far from the levels present on the British car. As always, the most important factor will be the final behavior on track. For this reason, it is not necessarily true that a higher percentage of anti-dive is the right path to follow. Let's consider an example. A too high degree of anti-dive can trigger a certain mechanism at the front, 
making it more complicated to activate the tire compounds, as this is a system where the percentage of load transfer that actually reaches the internal elements is only a fraction of the total. The higher the percentage of anti-dive, the lower the load that the suspension elements will experience. Ferrari had already decided last year to prioritize dynamics at low speeds. McLaren and Red Bull dominated the fast sections thanks to stiffer mechanisms, with higher percentages of anti-dive. The Marinello team has therefore taken a step in this direction and sought a new compromise. This translates into a lower temperature applied to this axis, which in turn can cause excessive difficulty in bringing the compounds into the optimal range. As always in Formula One, it is the harmony of the final equation that determines success, a delicate balance where every variable dances on the edge of the possible. The Italian side chose its settings considering what the SF25 single-seater needed to improve on the old car, without disregarding the strengths of the 2024 Formula One car. Ferrari's Formula One form has been massively dictated throughout recent history by who is steering the ship. Its most successful era was under Jean Tot, whose tenure from 1993 to 2007 included helping guide Michael Schumacher to those five successive titles from 2000 to 2004. While successor Stefano Domenicali enjoyed a fairly lengthy stint from 2008 until 2014, since then there has been a bit of a revolving door at the top, which has not been helpful. In current boss Frederick Vasseur, who has been in charge since the start of 2023, Ferrari has someone who has brought strong leadership to the team and done a lot to get everyone working in the same direction. It can be argued that, as Fred Vasseur heads into his third year in charge, he has been able to stamp his authority on things something that Lewis Hamilton will be able to benefit from. On the other hand, Charles Leclerc mentioned that the French manager has a great ability to maintain the Marinello team's emotional level at a high standard and noted that they have become much more solid in that aspect in recent years. On top of that, Fred Vasseur and Lewis Hamilton have known each well since the junior category days when the British driver won GP2 with Frederick Vasseur at RT Grand Prix. So there is a long-standing relationship there and one that we know already works. With trust in place and strong friendship bonds, things could not be better aligned in terms of the team boss and driver dynamic. But Ferrari team principal Frederick Vasseur is not a lonely island of calm amid a turbulent sea. His mindset is spreading throughout the organization and he has brought alongside him similar personalities to help pervade this new approach. As Charles Leclerc pointed out last week about the new senior management team that includes some key Mercedes signings, deputy team principal Jerome D'Ambrosio and chassis technical director Loic Serra, decisions are being made calmly by the head, not rushed through because of the heart.